Welcome to Love You a Brunch, the podcast for foodies and those who'd rather be brunching. Hi, I'm Jody Stapler. We're talking with Dan Zuccarello today from America's Test Kitchen about a new cookbook that they have coming out, Cook It in Your Dutch Oven. So Dan, how are you today? I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm doing great. So first off, tell me about yourself. Yeah, so, um, you know, I'm uh, originally a chef from uh, from Providence, um, and I've been working with uh, America's Test Kitchen for about 10 years now. Started off as a test cook, um, developing recipes, and now, um, you know, 10 years later, I'm, I'm leading recipe development for our cookbooks. Okay, and what is exactly America's Test Kitchen? It sounds so official. <laughs> well, it is, you know, we, we, uh, we, we it's official, definitely. <laughs> Um, uh, you know, we, um, we strive to make recipes that work. I think that is our, our motto and what people kind of know us for. Um, you know, people really know us for our two magazines, Cooks Illustrated and Cooks Country. Um, you know, we definitely have a a very vibrant, uh, cookbook program as well, but, uh, no matter what, um, you know, publication people are reading um, through America's Test Kitchen, um, the products are the same. We are striving to create recipes that work, recipes that people can rely on, um, that are interesting, fun, get people cooking in the kitchen, um, take some of the guesswork out of cooking, which I think a lot of people struggle with. But that's really who we are, is creating recipes that people are interested in that work um, and that can be relied on. Yeah. Um, You have a great website. Yeah. It has a little bit of everything. It does. I mean, it's it's, it's, a... The two magazines and each have a website. Um, you know, there's a, a, a large resource there of all kinds of recipes. Um, I use it myself. I was, I was, you know, it's, it was recently Thanksgiving, and um, I was certainly uh, one of the, the members uh, frequenting the website for recipes. You have a lot of cookbooks through America's Test Kitchen. Oh yeah, I mean, I would say at least a hundred. I mean, at this point, I mean, we've we've been publishing for a long time, wow. but we, you know, we 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 publish on average, you know, um, 12 to 14 cookbooks a year. So, um, wow. you know, we are very active, um, you know, in creating cookbooks with new topics, interesting topics, things that really reflect, um, the current food trends, um, and, and certainly what our readers are really interested in, which I think is, uh, kind of a good segue into this cookbook, which, you know, our, our readers are very interested in their Dutch ovens. Um, and so, uh, we, we very early on recognize that and kind of approach that with that mindset of, you know, what, what kind of challenges pe- do people have because they have a Dutch oven? Maybe they're interested in buying a Dutch oven, but they're hesitant because it is an investment and they want to make sure that they're getting their money's worth. Um, those kinds of, um, you know, considerations um, we, we kind of brought into the planning um, and kind of execution of this cookbook. Yeah. Now, when I think of Dutch oven cooking, I always think of like campfire cooking, but this, you're talking about more in your kitchen. Definitely. You know, and, and, and you know, uh, I think of that as well. I, I have, you know, I, I'm a Boy Scout, you know, and I, <laughs> I, I can remember growing up and, you know, uh, sitting by the campfire with, a, you know, a, a cast iron uh, Dutch oven. But this is, this book is really meant for indoor cooking and, and the, the type of Dutch oven that people are mostly, you know, f- you know, familiar with, with the enamel coating on the inside, mm-hmm. um, you know, the beautiful Dutch ovens that you see um, in people's kitchens or in stores, um, uh, the kind of workhorses of the kitchen that um, everyone's familiar with. Okay. And is now with these kind of Dutch ovens, because I honestly don't have one, I am a big camper and I cook outside in very historical ways. So I'm used to that cast iron. Is there, is there a special way you're supposed to clean a Dutch oven like this that you would buy for your inside? Well, so this is the great thing about um, cast iron of today. I mean, I think um, you can buy, you know, when we're talking about a Dutch oven, we're really talking about a size and shape of a pot. So a Dutch oven is typically a wide pot, a wide bottomed pot with, you know, um, you know, medium side, uh, you know, medium tall sides. Um, And it's in most cases, pretty heavy duty. Um, They can come um, as just plain cast iron. You think of like a lodge, um, you know, uh, cast iron skillet, the same material, just in a different shape. So they do come, you know, in that style. And that's 
kind of what you're thinking of with yeah. um, the type of Dutch oven that you would put over a campfire. They also come um, for in you know more for the home cook. Um, they come enameled, and enameled really just means that it's coated um, in a type of almost glass coating that just helps to protect the cast iron because cast iron does. Require a little bit of upkeep if it's non-treated. Um, you know, right. when you're thinking about like a cast iron skillet. So the nice thing about an enameled cast iron Dutch oven is that the upkeep is a lot easier. You know, you ha- it is coated, so really you don't have to worry about. Um, some of the things that you do with an untreated um, cast iron uh, Dutch oven. So cleanup is pretty easy. You know, regular soap and water, scrubbing it. Um, You know, we do tend to recommend people, you know, use, um, you know, uh, uh, nonstick uh, utensils, things that you'd use in a nonstick skillet. You don't have to. Um, You do want to be a little gentle, you know, with the interior because it can scratch. But um, it's cast iron. It's really durable. You don't have to uh, be walking on eggshells when you're cooking with it. Right. And they're beautiful. I'm looking at um, a page that of reviews um, on the America's Test Kitchen website, and they are beautiful pans and pots. Well, and this is the thing. I mean, I, I, you know, they are a centerpiece. I know I, I use my Dutch oven all the time as a serving vessel, um, you know, for dinner. And I think um, it is, you know, and they're, they're, they can be a little pricey depending on the, t- the Dutch oven that you buy. But I think, you know, given they, they last a lifetime, you're really only going to buy one Dutch oven. Um, it's worth the investment. Um, and it, because it's so versatile, um, really, you get you, you definitely get your money's worth. And it's beautiful. So, you know, it's not just something that's going to stay in your kitchen. You can bring it to your dinner table. Then one of the nice things about Dutch oven is it retains heat really well. So it's a great uh, serving vessel because whatever you're going to serve is going to stay nice and warm, you know, uh, while you're eating. Yeah. Yeah. I will. I will say, I mean, we, you know, when we, when we dive into a topic like this, like a Dutch oven book, I mean, we, we have to buy a lot of Dutch ovens because there's a lot of people who are developing recipes, you know, for our, our books and we all need to have, right. you know, some Dutch ovens at hand. And so we really had some fun because, uh, you know, when you're in, when you're in the market for a Dutch oven, you can have some fun looking at colors because, you know, that's one of the things I said, you know, the, they really are a presentation piece and, um, it is an investment, you know, in your kitchen, um, uh, definitely a worthwhile one, but you can really um, go to town figuring out, you know, your favorite colors um, and and kind of spruce up your your uh, dinner table right, with it. Right. Okay. So if someone's going out and buying a brand new Dutch oven, enameled, uh, what size do you think they should get? So you can get Dutch ovens in all types of shapes and sizes. Um, for this particular book, again, we were thinking about um, our readers and what they have, and most of our readers have a round uh, Dutch oven that's about five and a half to seven quarts, and that's about average. So um, I I would say for people who are in the market for a Dutch oven, I I find a round Dutch oven the most universal. Um, It does the best with all kinds of different recipes. Um, If you had an oval Dutch oven and you were interested in in this cookbook, you certainly could cook the recipes in this cookbook. You might need to adapt them slightly. But um, I always stick with, you know, a round Dutch oven somewhere in the five and a half to seven quarts, because then you've got some space to, you know, cook big batched uh, recipes, uh, which is another highlight of, of using the Dutch oven. Right. So let's talk about the cookbook. Um, it's not available yet as of this recording. It'll be available in a couple of days, um, December 4th, I believe. Um, but it says it's the most useful pot in your kitchen. So tell me about that, because you know what? With I have four kids, with six people in the household, I hate cleanup after dinner time. <laughs> well, and and this is really, I think, again, the 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 biggest appeal for me is, you know, for a Dutch oven is it really is kind of the quintessential kitchen workhorse, right? Um, it's it's all, it's basically the only pot you'll ever need. Um, it it it's because of its material. You know, like we've been saying, it's it's made of cast iron. It conducts heat really well. It retains heat really well. I should say rather, um, which is a big plus. Um, it is a large pot, so you know you can make big big batches of soups and stews. It's versatile. You know, you'll see in the cookbook. We don't just stick to the basic soups and stews. We really dive into one pot meals braises, frying, roasts, you can bake bread in it. Um, it kind of does it all. And, and so, um, you know, when we were working on this book, we kind of recognized that there's a lot of potential with having a Dutch oven. Um, and so this book was really about unlocking that potential for our readers, um, really showing, you know, the possibilities of, of using your Dutch oven. 
Yeah. So tell us, um, tell us one of the best recipes in your opinion. Well, you know, we're talking about versatility and I think, you know, for me, one of the, the best examples of that is this chicken pot pie that we have in the, um, the, the, the one pot, uh, dinners, um, mm-hmm. chapter. I, I think it really shows how versatile, um, you know, how creative you can get when you're working with a Dutch oven. It's a, it's a kind of classic pot pie filling. You know, you, you, you make a, a sauce with some basic aromatics, you poach your chicken. The really, you know, fun part, uh, comes up when you create the lattice top, um, mm-hmm. you know, chicken pot pie, everyone thinks about the really delicious, um, you know, uh, pastry top to a chicken pot pie. And so we, we certainly couldn't, you know, leave that out. What's really interesting with this recipe is, um, while we're cooking the filling, you know, the chicken and the, and the sauce and the, and the vegetables in the oven, what we do is we cook the, um, pastry top at the same time. And, you know, um, you know, most people think of a Dutch oven, they're thinking of the actual pot, but let's not forget about the lid, which is also made out of, uh, cast iron and is a great uh, plate for cooking the pastry. So actually what we do mm. is we flip the, the lid upside down, put it on top of the Dutch oven, and we actually build the pastry top right on the lid. The whole thing goes in the oven, comes out, we slide the pastry top off the lid onto the, uh, the filling, and there's dinner um, in one pot. Smart. Right? I would never have thought to do that. But yeah, you're right. I mean, it's a perfect thing to to bake on to to cook something on. I mean, why not? Yeah, it's really great. And 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 you know, we really kept things simple. You know, we we worked with um, store bought pastry dough, which I absolutely love. If your listeners have never you know gone and, and tried uh, store bought puff pastry, it's a it's a really great um, quick pastry to use. I use it for desserts. I use it for savory, all kinds of stuff. But you know, all you have to do is thaw it, roll it a little bit. We actually make a lattice top with with the pastry mm-hmm. to kind of spruce things up for the pot pie. Um, but it's a really easy chicken pot pie and it's all done in one pot. Yeah, that's awesome. I, you know, I do love a puff pastry and people, you know, often don't use it because it is something that it really takes skill to create on your own. But the store bought in the freezer section is wonderful for so many things. So yeah, that is a great one to put on top of this. Definitely. So now how, how would you get it started? Do you just stick everything all together and stick it right in the oven or can you start it? Do you start it on the stove? How would you start that? Yeah. So, you know, we get a, we get a a reasonably hot oven, something around 400 degrees, but we basically, you know, we start with a a, a typical, um, you know, pot pie base, you know, we use leeks in ours because, you know, we, we wanted to incorporate some fresher flavors for this chicken pot pie. So, you know, we saute some leeks, some carrots, Um, get those nice and softened, build, um, you know, a a sauce base thickened with a little bit of flour, um, some chicken broth, kind of stir that all together until you've got a a nice thick sauce. And then we just throw in, you know, pieces of chicken thighs, put it in the oven, like I said. And the the really beautiful thing is, you know, the cast iron does just as well in the oven as it does on the stovetop. Mm -hmm. So instead of sitting around kind of stirring the the chicken pot pie base, you know, for an hour, all we have to do is put it in the oven and kind of let it slowly cook in the oven without, you know, kind of monitoring it, which is great. Um, And like I said, you know, the, the, the pastry top is cooking at the same time. You pull it out of the oven, dinner's ready. That's great. So, okay, so that's a great savory dinner. Can you make desserts and things in this as well? Oh, yeah. And then this is, you know, this is where we really had some fun um, with desserts because, again, you know, um, everyone everyone knows about soups and stews when they're thinking of a Dutch oven. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, sometimes you, you, you kind of forget the other um, really interesting things that you can do with some of the, the um, you know, things you have in your kitchen. And Dutch oven is certainly a good example of that. Um, I, I honestly really love um, the recipe for apple pan dowdy. Um, it's essentially, uh, when you, not, if your listeners aren't familiar with pan dowdy, it's actually a technique of, of dowdying, um, is what it's called, but really what it means is pressing pastry into a, a fruit filling. It's, if you can imagine the flavors, imagine the flavors of an apple pie, but think of a lot less work. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so that's, what's really great about this is, so you make a really easy, um, kind of classic, uh, you know, uh, pie dough, but you don't have to worry about shaping the dough into a pie shape. If you, if you have, if your listeners are a little, you know, uh, uneasy with, you know, making a pie, the great thing about this is you make a really simple apple filling in the pot and you, uh, put the crust on top, 
you bake it, you know, together. And then what's really great is um, just before uh, serving, you, as I said, you do this technique called dowdying, where you take a back of a spoon and you kind of press the the crust into the filling just a little bit so that the sauce kind of billows over the sides. Um, and it's absolutely delicious. And it's, again, it's all done in one pot. It's, it's a real uh, crowd pleaser um, in my house. Um, and it's super simple. Yeah, that sounds delicious. Yeah. A few other favorites of mine, you know, I, I, I will go and say, you know, soups and stews, again, everyone thinks of it. We have a really great, if everyone's, you know, kind of tired of the traditional, you know, chicken soup and beef stew, we have this really delicious French style pork stew um, that I really uh, recommend. Think about, you know, just the same kind of rich flavors of, of stew, but with a slightly, you know, lighter um, flavors. And it's got some really interesting ingredients. So you take a uh, pork butt, which, uh, you know, most people think mm-hmm. of with, you know, pulled pork, but you cut it into stew sized pieces and you build this really delicious stew with potatoes, carrots. There's a little mm. bit of kielbasa in there, some really interesting um, vegetables, some savoy cabbage, some herbs of Provence for kind of, kind of like a, a you know a Mediterranean flair to the stew. Really, really delicious. Another really uh, great recipe uh, from a different chapter. Now thinking about uh, roasts and braises, which is another really great way to use your Dutch oven. I absolutely love this recipe for uh, slow roasted chuck roast. So you know everyone thinks about you know uh, uh, chuck roast, which is you know we commonly call for when we're thinking of pot roast. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I love this recipe when you take chuck roast, you know, we, we tie it, we brown it on the outside, we season it really well, but then we put it into a low oven and we cook it for a while. And the beauty of it is that the, the slow, low heat of the oven and the Dutch oven kind of really, um, just allows the, the chuck roast to all the, all that, you know, tough muscle to just really tenderize and get super juicy, and um, I honestly like this better than prime rib on the holidays. Wow, it's a, it's it's way less expensive. Chuck roast is not that expensive at the at the grocery store, um, but it has the texture of a really expensive prime rib. The, the The meat is just super juicy, super tender, and I actually think way more flavorful than some of the more premium roasts. Um, and it's a great way to use your Dutch oven because, again, the Dutch oven does just as well on the stovetop as it does in the oven. You can brown the roast on the stovetop. Put the you know uh, transfer the Dutch oven to the uh, oven and again you kind of walk away let let the oven do its thing and and dinner's ready. Nice. About how long would that take in the oven? So it's yeah it, it takes about an hour and a half for the roast to cook um, in the oven and then you know w- w- like I said it, we we start with a, a low oven um, and then you know after about an hour and a half we kind of boost the oven temperature and then kind of finish the roast in the oven then but allow the the hotter oven temperature kind of crisp the exterior a little bit. Very good. Okay. And I'm looking here on uh, one of the pages and it's uh, the bourbon pecan bread pudding or pecan bread, however you want to say it. Um, Yeah. But that looks delicious. I'm a bread pudding fan. So that, that was, would be very good, especially breakfast. (laughs) (laughs) Why not? To me, you know? it's like French toast. Bread pudding <laughs> is French toast. So hey, hey, you said it, and I'm I'm there with you. Um, you know what I really like about this recipe is again, um, kind of thinking about you know interesting ways to use your Dutch oven. Um, clearly, it's a pot. It's great for you know all kinds of different things. But if you start thinking of your Dutch oven as another bowl in your kitchen, um, it's probably one of the biggest bowls you have in your kitchen. We really wanted to try to make this as as fuss free as possible. And so kind of using the Dutch oven as the bowl to make the kind of uh, basic custard, it's eggs, whole milk, heavy cream, some sugar. Um, it's definitely an over the top dessert, some bourbon in there, which yeah. I love. Um, we kind of whisk that all together, add the bread. Uh, we use challah for this recipe. Yeah. Why not? Stir it all together in the Dutch oven before you even start any cooking. And then we transfer it to the oven and, and let it cook. But it's a great recipe, and it's a great way to kind of minimize the mess you were talking about. Right. About a family, and you want to kind of, you know, uh, avoid as many dishes as possible. And this is a kind of a great, um, a great example of that. Yeah, it, um, I do love that. I love that you can mix it in there, just stick it right in the oven, because seriously, the dishes do get a bit much. So that is awesome. And honestly, bourbon for breakfast. I mean, I know most people don't think bread pudding is breakfast. They see it as dessert, but I, come on, it's really French toast. 
I, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what uh, what other really great recipes, like for Christmas coming up, what would be good? Well, well, I mentioned the chuck roast. I think that that's a really great, um, that's a great holiday recipe. We also have this really delicious um, uh, beef braised in Barolo, which is a kind of a, a kind of next level um, pot roast. You know, people think of the classic pot roast. Um, with, you know, carrots and potatoes. Um, this has got a really, really luxurious uh, red wine sauce that you braise the beef in. Still, again, going back to this kind of our favorite braising cut for beef, which is the chuck eye roast. Again, really inexpensive and pretty widely available at the grocery store. But this has just kind of got some really incredible flavors. I mean, we, we pour a whole bottle of Barolo wine um, into the pot. I mean, and, and it's got tomatoes and kind of fresh herbs. There's a little bit of pancetta. Um, in there, and you know, you cook it until it's like fork tender. You slice it. This is the this is the the meal that you want to serve over, you know, polenta or mashed potatoes or you know some noodles. Um, it's it's really delicious and and a great a great dish for guests. Yeah, this is not my generation's parents' casserole dish. I mean, when when I think of growing up and the one pot casserole that our parents were making. This definitely is 10 times, 100 times better than that and more elevated for sure. And I do love that the recipes are classic, but yet they they are really fancy. They sound they seem fancy, but at the same point comfortable enough for the home cook to make. Well, yeah, I think you really hit on a, a good point. I, like I said, you know, earlier, um, you know, we're we're really trying. We really try to um, take into consideration um, what our readers are interested in cooking at home. And so, when we started this project, we started by you know asking our readers what types of recipes would you want to cook in your Dutch oven. And uh, you know, uh, there was a, a very clear uh, ask for, like you just said, you know, a lot of classic recipes, but some more interesting, you know, recipes that kind of challenge, um, challenge us, you know, are, you know, great for uh, entertaining. And so if you, you know, when you go into this book, like you just said, you know, you, you will find plenty of recipes that are, that you recognize, but you're also going to find a few that, you know, are really, really interesting. Um, and you know, a fun, you know, a fun, uh, meal for the weekend. If you're looking for a, a, maybe a little bit of a project or there's plenty of weeknight dinners, um, that we've included in here. So really, uh, a well-rounded collection of recipes. Yeah. With 150 recipes, there's gotta be something for everybody. That's it. Yeah. So, so basically you could make your whole meal from, uh, appetizer to main course to dessert in, in a Dutch ovens. It's, and that would be three pans to clean. That's like I said, it, it's, <laughs> it's the, it's the quintessential kitchen workhorse. Um, it really, yeah. it really does it all. Yeah. I bet it was a lot of fun to be in the kitchen with everybody trying different recipes. Do you guys have a lot of fun doing that? Uh, we have, you know, I, I if um, any of your listeners are in the Boston area, you know, we love having um, visitors come on by and, and take a tour of the test kitchen. It is a it is a, a great kind of environment to work in. Um, I love I love working in the test kitchen. It's fun. Everyone's you know having a great time. How could you not? We're developing recipes all day. Right. Um, exactly. And you know, there's plenty of food to go around. Um, so we're never hungry, but we really had a lot of fun with this book because I, like you said, there's, you can do all kinds of stuff. So we were, you know, we were cooking, you know, pasta, we were cooking, you know, one pot dinners, uh, bakery style breads, which we haven't talked about yet, but I mean, right. you can like, you know, think about all those gorgeous breads that you see at, at your local bakeries and they've got those gorgeous crusts and, you know, how is that possible? Because, you know, the, the bakeries have these, you know, huge, uh, you know, professional ovens. And the secret is you can have just as, you know, successful of bread, um, just as beautiful in your home oven. And the secret is, um, you know, if you've got a Dutch oven, you know, you're halfway there. All you have to do is make the dough. Mm. Um, but we had a lot of fun, um, you know, desserts, side dishes, uh, roasts. Um, you know, we, we, we were certainly enjoying ourselves. Yeah. So let's talk about some of the breads. Like, give us some examples of what, what kind of breads can we make in there? Yeah. So, you know, you can really do all kinds of breads. I think, um, you know, think of your favorite breads and, and, and really, so 
the the great thing about the Dutch oven is that um, you know, like we said, it, it works just as well in the stovetop as it does in the oven. Um, and and part of the success of of um, when you're when you're thinking about making bread is you really want um, uh, a hot surface to put the bread on because that's what really gets that good crust. You need like a really nice um, you know hot oven um, to kind of encourage the dough to um, expand. You also, uh, you know, one of the, the really important parts of, of making really good bakery style bread is actually not even the oven, it's steam um, that professional bakers are able to um, kind of incorporate into their ovens, which allows the crust to kind of expand, but then also um, create this really um, amazing, you know, crisp exterior. And the beautiful thing about a Dutch oven is that because it's made of cast iron, it retains heat really well, which kind of simulates, you know, the, the thick walls of an oven um and so it, it traps a lot of really great heat but then it also because it has a lid it actually traps the steam in the dutch oven which kind of also helps to create like we i was just saying these really great crusts and so you get these really gorgeous breads when you when you um use your dutch oven and so um you know just to name kind of there's a there's several breads you know that we we worked on um i really love the seven grain bread it's a really easy bread to kind of mix together. One of the really fun things is we use seven grain hot cereal mix, which you can find in your cereal aisle. Um, mm. I, I think about this bread, you know, because a lot of bakeries now, they're, they're doing these really um, amazing kind of like whole grain breads. You see them in the specialty aisles of your, you know, the supermarket. Um, this is a really easy one for you to do at home. Like I said, you use a seven grain hot cereal mix to get all those really great grains in there. Some bread flour, some, you know, um, sunflower seeds. Uh, sesame seeds, poppy seeds that we throw in there. It's a pretty basic bread to kind of, you know, mix together, shape it into a, you know, a, a round ball. And then we just lower it into the Dutch oven. Um, we let it, uh, you know, proof, kind of uh, bulk up a little bit. And then, like we said, like I said, you know, put the lid on, throw it in the oven and um, kind of let the Dutch oven do the work for you as far as creating a really gorgeous golden brown um, loaf of bread with a really excellent crust. Nice. Um, do you have to do anything to like, do you have to grease it or put parchment paper down or corn, cornmeal, anything like that on the bottom? Yeah. So what we did for this book is we use parchment um, to help lower the loaf um, into the Dutch oven and then actually kind of use it as a sling to pull the loaf out. So mm. our breads sit on a, on a, a sheet of parchment paper that goes into the, the Dutch oven. That just kind of helps get the bread in and out of the Dutch oven because the walls can be a little high. Um, right. Okay. And also cleanup then is simple. Uh, oh yeah. I mean, there's no cleanup with the Dutch oven at all. It, right. You know, that's a, a great thing about making bread with the Dutch oven. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So we can make breads. We can, what other kind of like pastries and things do you have in the book that we can make in the Dutch oven? Well, we did um, this chocolate babka. Now, this is you were you know you're talking about doing uh, you know bread pudding for breakfast. Yeah. This this is another uh, really special thing, especially because the holidays are coming around. Coming around, um, you know, uh, we did this braided chocolate babka. Um, oh. Again, I mean, just so delicious. It's a it's an enriched dough, um, so it has some eggs. Um, you know, some milk. Um, it's it's a sweeter dough, so there's some sugar in there. Um, we make this really delicious chocolate filling with bittersweet chocolate, some cocoa powder, um, some butter. You know, you roll out the dough into a, a rectangle. You kind of spread the chocolate mixture um, on the dough, roll it up kind of like a, a cinnamon roll. And then the fun part is you, you take this log and instead of cutting it into coins like you would with a cinnamon roll, we actually cut it lengthwise into two kind of uh, smaller uh, logs. And then we just kind of twist it to make a braid, roll it into a spiral shape, and then we just place that in the Dutch oven. And I got to tell you, if you, if you can, you know, if you, if you listeners buy the book, they'll see the picture, um, but it is absolutely gorgeous. You slice this open and it's just got these gorgeous, you know, uh, swirls of chocolate. And, you know, this is, this is the breakfast you want on, you know, Christmas morning or yeah. whatever, you know, holiday, you know, morning you want, but, um, right. Uh, Sounds amazing. It, it's, it's absolutely delicious. Oh, all that chocolate. Oh, I bet it's beautiful too. And I also really like, you know, we're going back to, you know, types of pastries, uh, you know, we, we, we haven't talked about frying yet and, um, donuts. Um, I, I love doing this with, you know, uh, you know, friends. It's a fun activity. Everyone loves donuts. 
Um, yeah. And it, the dough is really easy to come together. And again, the Dutch oven, because it's made of cast iron, it's a really, it, it retains heat really well, which is really important when you're frying because a lot of times the biggest challenge with frying at home is keeping the oil hot enough, right? Um, right. Be, you know, uh, you go out to dinner and, and they, you get something fried. Most times they have a, a giant, you know, fryer that's able to keep the heat um, you know, at the right temperature, but at home, you know, that can be more challenging. The Dutch oven retains heat really well and that therefore the, the oil stays at the right temperature. So you can do some really great fried chicken. Uh, we've got some really great recipes for, you know, fried chicken sandwich or, you know, pork schnitzel. Um, mm. but donuts, I mean, just so much fun and a really great, um, you know, dessert or breakfast, uh, yeah, and super easy, you know, it, you know, it doesn't take a lot of oil, um, and they're super easy to make and you kind of just, um, fry a few at a time, puff up beautifully. And then we have a couple of coatings that you can put on there. So you can do powdered sugar, you know, cinnamon sugar, you can, you know, kind of go to town with the toppings, but another really great way to use your Dutch oven. You guys thought of everything with this book. Well, you can do everything with the Dutch oven. So, yeah. You know, we want to make sure we, you know, kind of hit it all. Right. It sounds awesome. Well, I'm definitely going to pick it up when it, uh, becomes available. There's a kids book coming up as well that you guys are going to be releasing. Absolutely. You know, this is something we're really, really excited about. I mean, we've, um, we're actually celebrating our 25th anniversary this year. Um, and so, wow, I didn't know right? that you guys were that old. Wow. It's really exciting. Um, you know, we're really, we're really lucky. We have a, some really great support from our viewers and our readers. Yeah. Um, but you know, um, we're always growing and evolving and, you know, um, uh, inspiring young chefs is, is such an important thing uh, right now. And so uh, we uh, just launched a brand new division, you know, America's Test Kitchen Kids, you know, and, and like you said, there's a new cookbook coming out and it's, it's just so much fun. You know, all the recipes are tested by kids for kids. Um, oh, yeah, it's it. absolutely, it's, it's so great. And it, it comes with the reliability of, of America's Test Kitchen, you know, kitchen tested, you know, um, reliable recipes, but they are all geared for kids, um, for that particular, you know, the, the book that just came out, it's, it's geared for kids, um, eight to 13, but we're, you know, um, we're definitely, um, creating articles and things like that for kids of all ages. Um, but it's a really great, you know, um, opportunity to kind of teach kids about science and learning and, and making mistakes and, and kind of having fun in the kitchen. Yeah. I, well, I'll tell you, it's actually already on my list for, to buy my nine-year-old daughter. She loves to cook in the kitchen, but you know, it's hard to teacher myself because we're we kind of have the same personality and butt head. So if I, <laughs> I'm going to get her this book and hope that, you know, just stand back and see what, what happens. But uh, also the uh, cook it in the Dutch oven book is perfect for the winter and which we're just heading into. It's the comfort food. So it is definitely going to be added to my collection as well. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. So is there anything else you'd like to tell our listeners about to look forward to where to find you? Well, you know, you know, like I said, we're always coming up with new materials. I would say if if your um, listeners are interested in the cookbook, definitely check out our um, our shop on our website. It's shop.americastestkitchen.com. There you can find all the cookbooks that we've been working on recently. Um, really great deals for the holidays, um, and you'll you'll constantly be up to speed on on what's coming up next um, from the test kitchen. Uh, it really is a great website. It has a little bit of everything between uh, the recipes and there's videos you can watch and and all kinds of things. So, yeah, I definitely recommend everybody go to the, their website, uh, americastestkitchen.com, and then you can go to other links from there. So it's it's pretty nice. And, again, the book is Cook It in Your Dutch Oven, 150 Foolproof Recipes, Tailor-Made for Your Kitchen's Most Versatile Pot. So very good. Thank you so much, Dan, for joining me today. It's been great to speak with you. Thank you. I'm definitely going to go and get this as soon as it's out, and I'll be cooking with it probably all winter. I want to thank Dan Zagrella for joining me today, and make sure you check out americastestkitchen.com and Cook It in Your Dutch Oven book available wherever books are sold. I want to thank you for joining me today and for joining me every week. Please leave a review that helps others find us and helps keep the podcast going. Also, you can look for us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and anywhere you can hear a podcast. Join us again next week when I speak to Christy Sullivan about her new book, Keto Gatherings. Thank you so much. I'm Jody Stapler and love you a brunch.